Hey, what's going on? My name is Dustin. I'm the host of the Detail Spot Podcast. And in this episode, I'm gonna give you three of my top tips to get you to that $10,000 a month or more mark in your detailing business. These are three things I did in my detailing business that I personally saw the most um, the most progress with and I wanna share them with you and hopefully you get something from them as well and you may already be using these three tips uh, but I wanna share them with somebody out there that you know could possibly use it and uh, could possibly get something from this. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So we are just a few members away from reaching our founding member mark. Um, you know, we talked about this in the last episode about joining the detail community. Uh, that the twenty-seven dollar a month founding member rate is going to be going away really soon once we once we reach the amount of members that we have for our goal for that founding member rate. Um, what that is is you are joining at the very beginning stages. You get all access. Um, for everything that is there now and everything that is added in the future for that $27 a month and your first month for only a dollar. That's going away really soon. Um, there's too much value inside for that price point, um, but you, you can still join at that price and get access to everything that is there now and everything that is in the future. So go ahead and take advantage of that get all access to everything um, that's that's going to be added. This is going to take off. There's so much vision here for this platform. Um, and if you're curious to what's included in the detail community, it's a platform for detailers to come learn how to you know start their business, grow their business, or scale their business. There's tips and strategies inside that even the biggest detailing companies are using. You get access to over 50 classes. Classes are added regularly all on the marketing sales and um, SEO, just the things that actually move the needle forward in your business. You also get access to exclusive podcast episodes. These episodes are only available to detail community members and added on a regular basis. Uh, you get access to a community forums area to where you can connect and grow with other like-minded detailers inside and get support every step of the way. You get access to all that plus a lot more. There's so much included in this and a lot more to be added in the future. Um, so go ahead and take advantage of being becoming a founding member um, at the lowest price point that this will ever be. It's $27 a month and you get your first 30 days for only a dollar. The best way to look at this is if you get one strategy that relates that you relate to that gets you at least just one lead using that strategy, your membership's paid for for a long time. And I guarantee you that there's gonna be something in there that relates with you uh, that's gonna get you multiple clients. So it's well worth it. There's a lot of information in there. So go ahead and get, get access to that today. You can go to the link in the show notes if you're listening on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And the link will also be in the description if you're watching on YouTube. Um, or you can go to thedetailcommunity.com forward slash join. So the strategies that I'm going to go over, in my opinion, are going to get you the quickest success. They're going to get you the, there's a bunch of things that you can do in your business that you should be doing in your business. But these, these three things that I want to talk about are the things that I think when you're in the early stages or below that $10,000 a month mark, um, these are the things that can get you to that $10,000 $10, a month mark and things that I personally did in my business. And I'll be upfront, it took me about a year to a year and a half. I didn't have that overnight success like some do in this industry. You know, there are some people who create a detailing business in one month, boom, you know, it's booming. That can be due to the knowledge that they have when they started, or it could be due to their demographic, the area that they're located in. You know, there's a lot of different variables. Um, but honestly, I didn't know what I was doing when I first started. I didn't have any strategies that I was doing. I didn't have any, um, you know, any systems in place. I just thought that if I started my business and I called myself a detailer, that I would have clients call me. And obviously that's just not how it goes. Um, but it took me about a year to a year and a half to really realize what it took to start growing my business. And after I started, you know, figuring out things, trying things and becoming more knowledgeable in how I, I grew my business, then that's when I started to get leads coming in and I started to grow. Um, but 
it did take me a year and a half. And these three things are actually the three things that I started doing at that year to a year and a half mark to start pushing the, um, the amount of income we were making up. Um, you know, so that, that put us a, about a year and a half in, that's when we started making $10,000 a month plus. Um, and obviously it's been up from there. We started in 2016 was when I officially opened my detailing business. Um, I kind of did it as a hobby from 2012 to 2016, kind of like a, as a side hustle. Um, but from 2016 to currently, that's when we have been fully operational and, 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 and an actual company, an actual detailing business, um, and not just a, a part-time thing. Um, so, I'm going to share with you three things that um, these three things that I did at about that year, year and a half mark to where we started to see progress and we started to move up when it came to income leads coming in and just overall growth. So the first thing that I did to really um, to really build the foundation of my business ultimately so that we could grow because you do need a strong foundation when you want to grow. You know, you can grow too fast and if you don't have that foundation, then you are not gonna succeed because you can't, it's, it's not a sustainable model. And what I mean by that, that could mean your brand, your marketing, your systems, um, but ultimately I think it means your price. So I think your price point has to be on point. You have to have a good price and something that you, you know makes you money um, and you know makes your business money. So when I first started, I priced my services way too low. I was going for that quantity model uh, when I should have been going because detailing is a luxury. Not everyone should be able to afford this type of service because it's hard work. Um, it, it, it takes a level of uh, professionalism to provide it. Um, I, I then went up on my price. So um, that would be my first tip is your price point. Make sure you know what you're pricing yourself at and make sure you know what your profit goals are so that you can make you know per vehicle what you want to make um, as your profit goal for the month or for the year. So for example, if you wanna make you know $30,000 a month, you know you need to do the math on how much you need to make per day per hour even. So you take $30,000 and you divide it by, let's say you work 20 days in a month, you need to make $1,500 a day. But we'll use the example of $10,000 um, because that's what this video is all about, how to get you to that $10,000 mark. So if you did $10,000 and you're, that's your goal at first, um, you need to do $10,000 divided by 20 or how many other days a month you work. Um, so I'm using 20 as an example, so I'm excluding weekends. Um, so that puts us at $500 per day. So now you need to do, if you need to look at how many vehicles that you are detailing in a day, and say, okay, maybe my price is way too low because I'm working super hard. You may have the vehicles in, but your price point is so low that you're not making close to $500 a day. So you need to say, okay, say it takes me four hours to complete one service. Say your level one detail is, um, it takes you four hours and you can do two of those in a day. You need to say, okay, if I wanna make $500 per day, I need to make my starting price of my level one $200, $250, whatever the case is, um, or whatever your goal is. But for that $10,000 a month mark, you need to put it at $250 starting out at. If they t accept any add-ons or if they choose a higher package, okay, great. Now you are you have a lot more wiggle room and you can possibly go past that $10,000 a month mark. But I would put your starting price at the bare minimum of minimum of what your goal is. So if it's $10,000 a month, you need to make $500 a day and you need to do the math on what it costs you or what it, how long it takes you per vehicle. And then you need to do the math on what you need a price per vehicle. So if it's $500 a day, it takes you four hours per vehicle and you can do two vehicles per day for that starting package, then it needs to be $250 per level one or whatever your starting package is at. And I know you may be thinking, oh no, there's no way I can charge $250 per vehicle. Okay, yes you can. It doesn't matter what location you're at. 
what this would come down to is how good is your branding and how good is your professionalism because those things do have to back that higher price. $250 for a starting package is actually not a lot within our industry. If you look at some of the even mid-tier detailers, that is still a low price compared to what they are at. So if you want to be a a, a luxury premium type of business, you need to charge you know that higher price. And that's still not a high price. You can get upwards to $500, $600 without any polishing, without any coatings. People do charge that. So just know that $250 for a detail is not a lot. And that's not my recommendation to you to say, hey, this is what you need to price your packages at. Obviously, you're gonna have to do the math on your own on how long it takes you per vehicle and um, what your own profit goals is but this one in this example we're using ten thousand dollars a month so you know don't get don't have the fear that comes with pricing you know if you look at that price and you say man that's high i don't think i could charge that don't come at it with that mindset. Come at it with the mindset of what do I need to change within my business so that I can charge that price? You know, because if 200, if you're right now, say for that package I was just talking about, if you're around the hundred to $150 mark, you, if you look at your brand and say, does it match that price? Do you look at your professionalism, the, the, um, your, your reputation, do all of those things match the price you're at? You know, so if $250, you look at that as a lot and you think, no way I can charge that, start pivoting on your branding, your professionalism, how you stand out to that client. Because if you stand out and you look better than the rest within your area and your competition, you can now charge more than your competition because obviously your work is there, you provide good results, now your branding is the best, now your marketing is the best, you can charge more, you know, so $250, do not look at that as a lot. That honestly, it should be now with the inflation and everything that's going on, should be around the starting price point of the average um, within our industry. I know it's really not. There are a lot of detailers that are way undercutting themselves uh, out there, but that should be the starting price average within the detailing industry, in my opinion, either 250 or higher, honestly. This is a lot of work. It is a... It's a lot of work, it takes skill, and it takes knowledge, and for one, or and for two, you're not in business to lose, you're in business to make money. So that price point I think is extremely fair, and I think you can honestly go up from that price point. Um, just make sure that your brand, your marketing, your professionalism, and obviously the results that you provide to that client match that price. So for the second thing, that I did within my business within that year and a half, at that year and a half mark that really started pushing my business forward was actually dealerships. And I know what you're thinking, there's no way I wanna detail for a dealership. De dealerships don't wanna, don't wanna pay what I charge. Uh, they're a headache, they, they think they know everything. And oftentimes that is the case. I have dealt with a lot of dealerships that were a pain and I eventually fired them as a client, you could say. Um, but there are dealerships out there just like there are clients out there that are great clients and that are great dealerships and that respect that, hey, when they drop that vehicle off, you know exactly what they want, what they need, and you've already discussed this up front. They know that you're a professional company that they wanna do business with because they're a business as well. There are dealerships out there like that. At my year and a half mark, we, we acquired a dealership. I went in, sold them on our services saying, hey, you know, I think we would be a right fit for your company um, based on the way our brands align and based on how we do business, based on how you do business. And they started throwing us trucks. It was a dealership that only sold one or two year old uh, trucks like lifted Rams um, and a lot of diesel trucks. Some of them were bad, but we were able to charge for those. Um, some of those would need crazy paint corrections, but that dealership was so okay with us taking a week, you know, to get that paint correction done. And they were okay with the price point we were at and we invoiced them. And they honestly, that dealership consistently sent us 15 to $20,000 per month. Um, every month and they were completely okay with it and they loved paying that because they knew the type of service that they were getting. So do not get to where you do not wanna do dealerships at all just based on the horror stories because there are some great dealerships out there. And honestly, even when you get into like PPF intent, a lot of those 
uh, premium and high end tent and PPF shops, they deal with dealerships. Obviously it's higher end dealerships, but there is still dealership work coming into their business and it's consistent. That's the key part there. It is consistent on, obviously you do have to fear the fact of, you know, hey, if my work declines, I may lose that dealership and dealership work, if you lose them and, you're, and you are relying on them, um, that can, can be an issue later on, but you can find dealerships out there. As long as you provide the good work and you provide the professionalism and they want to do business with you, then you have nothing to fear about losing them and you have nothing to fear about them wanting to pay for your service because they're a great dealership and they, they're they a great business and they wanna do business with a great business. So dealerships are a great way to get you over that $10,000 a month mark and a great way to really scale your business. And it gives you a lot more time now to start tapping into because regular clients, not dealerships, like regular clients that you know just have one, two, three average vehicles, um, those are a lot harder to get consistently because you need to reach the masses um, to grow your business on. So now that you you have dealerships and say you tapped into a couple good dealerships that are sending you work consistently, now you have time to grow your business and start trying to reach the masses and get those high quality regular clients, you know? So, and then once you have those clients, now it may be time to hire because now you have a a, a solid clientele within the dealership realm and now you have a solid clientele with just the regular clients now it may be time to hire and that's that's when you start to scale forward um, so dealership were dealerships were a huge game changer for gr uh, fast growth for me and a great way to get over that ten thousand dollar mark um, because they're making money on that vehicle as well and they're getting them in regularly so don't be afraid to charge dealerships what you're worth be upfront with them about what you're going to offer. Maybe have some type of system saying, hey, when this truck comes in, I will send you a, a quote on everything that I see the vehicle needs. You can pick from that if you would like. Um, pick the things that you want done to this vehicle or maybe have a dealership package to where, hey, when a vehicle or a truck comes in, um, it gets the works and maybe that truck needs the works where it needs a paint correction, interior detail, engine bay. If you provide undercoating, maybe offer that to the dealerships. Um, being that one-stop shop to them to where the vehicle comes to your facility or when you arrive to them and when that vehicle leaves and it be completely ready to go and put and be listed on their lot, that's a game changer to them. So just think about what problems you can solve for that dealership upfront and just make sure that you are upfront with your pricing and that they know, hey, you may not be the cheapest, but they're getting what they need and you're solving a huge problem for them. So just pick the right dealerships though. Now the third thing, this one's gonna be kind of broad in a way, but if you think deep and you read in between the lines, this could be, you know, something that you start shifting your focus towards and it would be becoming relevant. You have to think about how can you become relevant? How can you um, reach the masses of your community and, and be that guy for detailing? Become the, the problem solver within that, that service that they need. You know, when people think within your area, hey, I need detailing. Does your business name pop up in their head? And that's what you want. You want to become the guy when it comes to detailing, ceramic coating, tent, PPF, whatever service that you offer, become that guy within your area. And how you do that is you start obviously with word of mouth. This is going to be the fastest way. There are things like social media, Google, and um, you know all of those ways that are going to get you more leads maybe in the long run, but those things take time to build. So does word of mouth, but you could have and land one great client that loved what you did and you killed it when it came to customer service and you killed it when it came to um, the result itself. You could have one client that spreads the word to 15 different friends. Maybe he's a golfer and he golfs with 15 of his buddies throughout the week or with throughout the month. And those guys are maybe the same type of person he is that love to get their car detailed or need that service. Now, now they call you and then you, you know, and, and it spreads like dominoes and it, it's, it's only up from that point on because once you can reach a bunch of those types of clients, 
that's when your business really starts to spread and, and become relevant. Now, I do recommend also starting on and not putting 100% focus on word of mouth and start spreading some focus as well to Google, social media, and any other place that you can be found. Um, now, social media and Google, those do take time for the algorithm to kick in, for your name to become relevant before you can, you know, start ranking on Google. That takes upwards to six months to a year. You know, maybe you can get success within three to four months if you do everything right and if you are not in an overly saturated area. But if you're in a competitive city, obviously Google is gonna take some time and not to say by no means that it's impossible because a lot of these detailers do not know what it takes to rank on Google. Um, they rank solely because there is no competition sometimes. Um, so start putting some focus into your Google account, making sure that you're doing all the strategies right. There's been uh, plenty of podcast episodes where I talk about Google and some of the things that you can do to really get your business uh, to move up in those rankings. Because once you move up in the Google rankings, that's when you're really going to get a bunch of calls coming in. Um, but so refer to back to some of the podcast episodes. We talk about that. And um, it, within the detail community, there are business classes on Google and how you can rank and how you can move up in the ranks on there as well. So uh, consider joining that if you're interested in any um, in, if you're interested in moving your business up in ranks and getting more leads from Google. Um, also social media, same thing. That's those are their classes inside of the detail community as well. And we refer back on some podcast episodes where we talk about social media, but social media is a game changer and something, a tool that we have now that they didn't have 10, 20 years ago, really. Now it is at its prime. It's at its Social media is something that we all should be capitalizing on when it comes to getting clients in and becoming relevant. This is a tool that we have, the, especially the younger generation that knows how to use it. If you are part of the older generation, obviously, I would learn how to use it if you're looking to get more clients in. It's not that hard. And the way that the features work within social media, it's kind of self-explanatory. You know, when it comes to Instagram and Facebook, Instagram has a search feature. You, all you have to do is use the search feature to find people within your area, follow them, engage with them. Over time, they see you posting regularly. They, they put it together that you are engaging with them. Eventually, when they need your service, if you're relevant and you're consistent, they'll use your services. Uh, Facebook has its similar way with, you know, you can dive into Facebook groups within your area and advertise through there. Not to say that it's going to work every time, but when someone refers you within those groups, your goal should be to be that number one guy that pops up over and over for recommendations, you know, so that is a way to become relevant and not to say that you get the business off of those, you know, when those, those people post in there. Um, but for the people that are reading that, they see that, Hey, maybe your, your detailing name is, uh, Jim Bob's mobile detailing. And, um, when people are saying, Hey, I need, uh, anyone know a good car detailer, um, and in that Facebook group in your city and your name pops up, you know, 20 times, people are going to start memorizing that you're kind of that guy, the guy that they want to use when they need that service. So that's your goal is, is to, you know, make, it's not the short term win off of it. It's the long term win that you are the guy that people recommend the guy that people, um, know is the detailer. You are the guy that should be your goal is to become the guy in your city. And you do that by word of mouth, you know, obviously that professionalism, like I talked about and, and everything has to be the package deal. All of those things need to be there because you need to set that wow factor for that word of mouth to become spreading. But word of mouth is, is huge. And that should be your primary focus right off the bat, but also trickle some of your attention towards Google, social media, because those are going to get you more business in the long run. Um, so play the short game, my short game would be to you those three tips, um, you know, become, you know, have your pricing down bat or down pat, you know, make sure that your price point is there. You know, number two is finding quality dealerships so that you can, you know, have income coming in, you know, I'm like I'm, I'm putting a, a lot of emphasis on a, a quality, quality dealerships. You don't want those buy here, pay here lots. You don't want those dealerships that disrespect your services. You want those quality dealerships. And once you find those, 
the ones that respect what you're providing to them and you respect the income that it provides to you, you know, that's a mutual, uh, a, a mutual trade of services. And that's what you want within your business. And, and finding those dealerships like that are huge. They provide you with consistent income so that you can now, you know, search for those quality, uh, regular clients. And then once you have both, then you can start hiring, like I mentioned. So dealerships are my number two quickest thing you can do to get past that $10,000 mark. And number three is to become relevant. You know, make sure that you're focusing on providing that wow factor to your clients and, and, and becoming relevant by putting some time into Google and social media and, and trying to get your word of mouth flowing on in person and online. You know, that's a huge thing because you do need leads coming in. Those dealerships are great in a great way. You could have one dealership that gets you $10,000 a month just off of them. Um, but if you're looking to scale and get more of those regular clients, Clients because regular clients are the ones that spread your name more. Once you have more regular clients out there that know about you, then that your 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 reputation starts to spread like wildfire. So um, you know, relevance is huge, especially since detailing businesses are generally within a city, and cities like to talk. They like to talk and, and spread the word about someone who is doing good. And not to mention, they also like to spread the word about who's doing bad. So make sure that your, your business and what you stand for and what you put out is quality and professional. So that is it for this episode of the Detail Spot Podcast. Hopefully you got something from those three tips. The, the three tips that I think you should do if you're looking to get past that $10,000 a month mark fast. I think these three things changed my business and I think they can change yours as well if you implement them right and if you focus on the right areas. So hopefully you got something from this and if you did, make sure to share it with a friend on social media so that they can get something from it as well. Share it to your stories on Instagram. And, um, and if you are enjoying the content coming from this channel, if you can leave us a review on Apple podcasts or Spotify, it greatly helps the channel grow so that we can reach more people and reach more detailers like yourself. And I'll catch you on the next episode of the detail spot podcast.